Okay, hi everyone. Uh, we have today um, a special edition of our Language is a Viral series. Uh, we are celebrating the uh, 17th uh, anniversary of the foundation of Foro de Escritores, uh, uh, a group uh, that was formed in Chile uh, in 2003, uh, in which a lo lot of us who are today and lo lots of other friends have been participating along the, the years. And the idea was to, to share a little of the, uh, the history of the work we, we made together along the, these years. And we, we thought it was uh, also a good, um, a good opportunity to talk about uh, something that is very related to what we're doing here. Uh, the idea of uh, working uh, uh, as a collective uh, with people from poetry, music, visual arts, performance, etc., and, and to see what happens, and, and to think of poetry not only uh, as the publication of a book, uh, but also as uh, performances, exhibitions, uh, to be around different circuits, uh, in and out of the literary world, etc. So, I, I just wanted to 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 tell some, some of the, uh, the, I don't know, how, how do you say ethos in, <laughs> in English? How the, like the, some important moments. Uh, ma ma milestones. Milestones. Yeah, but milestones, it sounds too important, but well, but too. <laughs> <laughs> it's too heavy. <laughs> but, well, uh, but that's the idea, and and of course, uh, as a lot, lot of you participated. Um, um, the idea is that uh, you share your opinions or questions, etc. Um, something that uh, that I will talk about is that uh, is that you can tell that that there were different uh, phases uh, in the photo de escritores. There, there is kind of a, a prehistoric phase. Uh, and also, like the the five uh, the five uh, first years were like uh, very very intense in the kind of activities and publications we did, and then it started like uh, morphing in in other projects, in other movements, in other uh, collectives, etc. But I, I always think that uh, the the Foro de Escritores as it started. Uh, the spirit and the friendship of uh, lots of us uh, has always been alive and in different ways. And, and of course, uh, this series, Language is a Virus, is uh, one of the other lives of, uh, of Foro de Escritores. So that, that, that's what I think also is very important to, to talk about it in, in this context. So, well, the, if, if, if you want to think about uh, what happened before uh, the Foro de Escritores, uh, I think that uh, an, an important part of it uh, was that uh, lots of us uh, were living in, in Europe at the beginning of the 2000s. Uh, Martin Baquero was before that, uh, at the end of the 19th, living in Paris. Andres Ambanter and uh, Martin Gavins were living in, in England and they started to participate along with Martin Baquero in the Writers Forum with uh, Bob Covey when, when he was alive. Um, Ana Maria Bride was in, uh, also in, uh, in Germany studying. Uh, well, all of us were studying uh, our masters or PhD in, in Europe. So uh, although uh, many of us didn't know uh, between each other, uh, we, we, I think we were living like uh, like the same kind of experience, like uh, having been interested in the Chilean tradition of experimental poetry, uh, which is very important, especially in the visual side. Uh, but we were eager to know more, more about concrete poetry, some poetry, uh, digital poetry, whatever, and, and the opportunity to be in other countries and to uh, be related to different groups was really important for us. I, I mentioned uh, the Writers Forum. In, in my case, it, it was really important to uh, to know Eduardo Escofet and to attend the 
proposed festival he was organizing in, in Barcelona. Uh, it was like, a, a, I remember like a, what's the expression? A crash course on some poetry in like three days. I saw lots of very important people. I didn't know almost anything about uh, some poetry, but I was able to see in, in a couple of festivals, like lots of very important people. It's a very interesting experience. So that, that was really amazing. And, and I think that uh, one of the first uh, uh, beginnings of the Writers Forum was when uh, um, uh, the two Martins participated in an exhibition uh, in, in Paris that, that you prepared, Martin. Uh, I don't know if it was on September 2003. Uh, that, that you organized a visual poetry exhibition and Martin Gavins participated. I, I couldn't go, by, but I sent you a video and some visual poems, I remember. And that, that was the first time I know about uh, Martin Gavins, for, for example. Well, the 30 year of the death of Allende. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. In Paris, and uh, we organized an ex exhibition, a performance of, of some poetry and visual poetry with. Mm. Martin Garris, Andres and Bantres here, so yeah, I know people. Yeah. And a couple of months later, uh, Martin Gavins uh, turned to Chile. And in December of 2003, uh, as I said before, uh, he invited some of us uh, to a first meeting of, of, of what he, wa he wanted to, to do, like a, a, a Chilean version of the Foro de Escritores. Uh, I didn't know personally too much uh, about uh, Writers Forum. I, I, I knew about Coving, but in a very sad way because he was going that year to the proposed festival, but he died some weeks uh, before. So I, I was hearing about Bob Coving, but, but couldn't see him uh, performing. But, the, but there was this uh, first meeting with uh, Martin Gavins, Andres Sambanter, uh, Gregorio Fontaine, uh, I always uh, say that uh, for me it was really impressive because I, I, I knew about uh, Andres' poetry long ago, his uh, linear or more normal poetry, which I, uh, I really admire very much. So I was hoping that Andres would, would read some of his wonderful poems and he started making some very strange noises. And I thought, what happened to this guy? <laughs> I mean, we lost him. <laughs> and, and it was uh, the first time that, that I knew that, that uh, Andres was also engaged in some poetry and all that uh, with Martin Baquero in, in some, some years before. That was a, a, a dimension of his work that I, I didn't know. So um, we started making these meetings and and I think it was very important for, for the next meetings because the, the first meeting was in, I think it was uh, Martin's uh, uh, father-in-law house, I think. It was uh, like Elvira's house, right? I, I, I don't remember. Uh, but it wasn't the house in, in, in which he would live uh, later. But uh, Kurt Folch, who, who was also part of the group in the beginnings, proposed that we, we could meet in a bar called Rapanui, which is a bar uh, that was in a, a, a very uh, uh, quiet neighborhood that, uh, that in, in those years was per, like very quiet place. But um, uh, in the later years, uh, it became really hipster. So now it's full of artists <laughs> and all that. But we were the first. <laughs> and. Uh, we started meeting uh, on Saturday afternoons around five o'clock, like uh, every two weeks. And it was really relaxed, I remember. Uh, some of us were still living in, in Europe. Uh, for example, Ana Maria and me were sending materials to be read on those first sessions. But, um, but also lots of people were becoming interested in what was happening. It, it was very relaxed and the spirit was, uh, the spirit I, I suppose was uh, part of the original Righteous Forum uh, uh, meetings, like uh, talking about uh, what we were reading, uh, what we were writing, showing it and, and, and making comments, but not, not, like, not, not like a workshop. 
it, it was like showing what you you were doing and in that spirit it was really um, diverse i mean uh, lots of people were coming coming and going so, sometimes there were really crazy stuff uh, in those sessions sometimes uh, really conservative poetry was great also i mean it was not like only experimental poetry there were very different kinds of projects and also a uh, visual or, or music uh, project it was really really free very diverse of course uh, some of us preferred some kind of stuff instead of others uh, whatever but it was very very relaxed in that way and something that was very important for all of us uh, we, we were all around like 28 32 uh, around 30 like like most of us but uh, very in the beginning we we received lots of uh, of uh, poets from uh, that were only a couple uh, years uh, older than us, uh, like Carlos Cusina, who is here. Uh, lots of us were uh, admirers of his poetry, and he was also experimenting with the uh, digital poetry. He made like the first uh, digital poetry book uh, or website in in, in Chile. Uh, and also there, uh, there was um, Soledad Fariña, uh, who had worked a lot uh, around visual poetry. Uh, and also, uh, what was very interesting was that we were um, receiving uh, lots of people when they came to Chile, like they, they uh, put in touch with us and, and started going to this meeting. So, uh, we we made sessions with, uh, for example, Cecilia Vicuña and Jerome Brodenberg, or with a lot of uh, Latin American poets that came to Chile and came to this place to to show what they, they were doing. Um, and then it started. The, these were, uh, as I said, like the first five years, uh, who were very concentrated, and we started. Uh, we we were meeting very regularly. It was very organizing in those years and the I think the the most important besides the experience of meeting all of us and being together and, and sharing a lot of material was that uh, and, and it was part of the beginning of the project to to publish some books uh, based on the work that we were showing in in those meetings so I have some some of them now they they all had numbers this is one which is um, uh, a little uh, anthology of uh, visual poetry by Alberto Anonimo, uh, Juan José de Azola, Andrés Ambanter, and Gregorio Fonten. Uh, then there was uh, two in which uh, uh, we participated with Carlos Cosiña, Enrique Morales, Kurt Foltz, and me. This was uh, more around uh, linear poetry, like this. Uh, then th there were also more like um, uh, mon mon monography books, like this of uh, Martin Baquero. Uh, this was seven, and it included a CD and a DVD. <laughs> Carlos lo tiene. Uh, also, this one, uh, 14, 15, 14, 15, it was a double number. Uh, also, with uh, linear uh, poetry and for example in, in this one there, there are uh, some poets that that were participating in all of these sessions or some of them that came like a couple of times only but that that was the spirit like uh, making receiving whoever was around and who was interested in in what we were doing and also the um, uh, the interesting thing also was that uh, Every time we we publish a book, uh, there was uh, a, a, a party or or a, or a meeting to to present that uh, that book. So those were very important opportunities to show the the performances, the sound poetry that uh, some some of us uh, were doing. Something very important uh, about the books: there were only 100 copies. Uh, now these are very expensive, by the way, <laughs> and uh, 
uh, they were all uh, hand sewn by uh, Olaya Balcells. Uh, she's a wonderful uh, bookmaker, uh, bookbinder, and uh, that was really special. The 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 books were 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 made uh, in the house of Martin uh, with, with his printer, but uh, with a lot of care. So they were very special objects also. Um, we also planned uh, other, other times to prepare different kind of books like fanzines. Uh, we also later had a website, but we didn't uh, put much effort in, in that. So, so this was primarily the, the first uh, and, the, and the more important way of showing and, and sharing our, our work. And, and there was like a very international spirit in, in what we were doing. I remember that uh, Martin was sending the, the copies of these books to lots of friends in Europe, in the States, in, in Latin America. Some of you uh, might have them in, in their homes. Uh, I remember we were very excited when we received a, a letter of uh, Henri Chopin saying thanks for, for, for sending him the books. So uh, I think that uh, from the beginning, we, we were very conscious of being part of an international circuit. Uh, and that was really important because, uh, especially like in the first five years, uh, there was a lot of people from the most uh, official uh, poetry uh, context in, in Chile that thought that we were doing very uh, stupid stuff. They, uh, or, or like the typical thing that they said is that uh, this wasn't poetry. And it was funny because uh, some of us, for example, Andres or or uh, Kurt Folch or Alejandro Sambra, who was a friend of uh, lots of us and, and he was like related to this group, were, were already very known as poets. Like, uh, so a lot of people didn't understand what the, these guys were doing. And, and something that, that I think was very important uh, later especially was that uh, at the same time that uh, Lots of poets weren't uh, take, taking much care of what we were doing. We started meeting with a with lot of artists and musicians and, and performers. So I think like the, I don't know, the, uh, and, and this is something we were talking with Zoe uh, some weeks ago, like like the literary content of the Foros Pitores started like dissolving and mixing with lots of other experiences. In that way, it was very important, for example, when, when we made some uh, sound poetry uh, performances at, at a very important uh, sound art exhibition in Museo Nacional de Bellas Artes. Uh, we were invited by Rainer Krause, who is a, a very important sound artist and, and researcher about uh, sound art. And, and we had these experiences uh, and opportunities to be working with people from uh, other disciplines that were were more open to, to what we're doing. They, they say, oh, come on, uh, do whatever you like. Uh, that, that was more uh, relaxed. So, so that was uh, important also in that, uh, in that period. There were also some, some important uh, projects in, in which some of us were involved. Uh, for example, we participated in a poetry and music uh, project in 2006 uh, uh, with the Escuela Moderna de Musica, um, a very important uh, music school in, in Santiago, uh, where we organized uh, couples of one poetry and one composer, and we, we made uh, original uh, works uh, to present with a little uh, orchestra, chamber uh, music group with piano, uh, violin, flute, etc. Um, so those were kind of the, the, the this project that we, we were starting to uh, to participate, and and I think that that the other important part of, uh, also at, at the same time was, and and I think this was very conscious. Uh, at some point we we started like thinking about how, how could we deal with this. Uh, different kinds of uh, reception that we were having. And there, there were, of course, different choices. Uh, 
One was to do nothing, just do what we wanted to do and, and it's okay. Uh, other was like have a more pedagogical approach. For example, when, when we made a performance, like talk about what we were doing or, or sharing some of our references. And the other part was uh, also started to produce some critical work. Uh, some of us were, were more involved in the university. So, um, uh, so we started taking that place also to, to do this kind of stuff. Uh, Andres Ambanter uh, uh, did a class about visual poetry, I think uh, two or three years uh, at the Universidad de Portales. Uh, Martin Baguero also teach uh, some classes there. Uh, I was also a teacher at the same uh, university. So uh, th that was also a, a way in which uh, we also started uh, meeting with the younger poets that were very interested in, in like this uh, new kind of, uh, of poetry. So I think those, those uh, first years were like an exp expansion in very different uh, dimensions, locally, internationally, uh, and especially like experimenting with lots of different uh, kind of uh, projects. I think if, if you take a look at what we did in those years, I think we all tried a little bit of everything, a little bit of visual poetry, of sound poetry, of poetry and music, of uh, uh, appropriation. Uh, we were like experimenting a lot and, and, and at least for, for me it was like uh, having going to a, a, a new university like uh, learning. I always say that uh, most of what I, I've learned uh, about experimental literature was with the meetings of, of uh, Foro de Escritores and similar meetings with friends in, in other parts. I didn't have a class of experimental literature in, when I studied. Uh, I almost heard nothing about experimental poetry when I, I was uh, studying. So this was the, the, the opportunity. So after uh, those five years that were very intense, uh, we started uh, meeting with less uh, regularity and also uh, we, we stopped uh, publishing the book the books, it was a lot of work, especially for, for Martin Gavis, who was also the instigator of all the meetings, like calling all the people, etc. Uh, and it's interesting because uh, in a way we, we were meeting less, but, but we were, we had already this same connection. So we, we were uh, organizing very different uh, projects between some of us and other, other people. Uh, one of those projects was like a more academical project, uh, the, um, an experimental literary congress we orga organized with Martin Baquero and, and Rodrigo Rojas, uh, uh, which was called La Universidad Desconocida, the Unknown University, on 2009. Uh, there were lots of poets from Catalonia, uh, from France, from Argentina, uh, and it, it was a very important meeting uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, criti critics and scholars and also poets from uh, lots of parts of, uh, of Chile, but especially uh, from other countries. Um, and also we, we founded a, an academic journal also focused on experimental literature, which is a Revista Laboratorio, which is still going on in Universidad de Portales. Uh, there are articles in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And well, I, I've made some, some interviews to some, some of you or uh, that uh, have been published uh, there. Some of you have been uh, publishing uh, their works there. Uh, some of you have been studied in articles that have been published there, etc. So it was a very interesting place to like to trying to occupy a place in the, in the academy. Um, and uh, there were also like very different uh, uh, projects who were like, uh, of course, they're they not projects of the photo of the but are related in, in some way. For example, the, 
eh, la Orquesta de Poetas, eh, uh, Poetry and, and Music Group, that was founded on 2010, eh, with the Federico and, and Juan Pablo Fante and Fernando Pérez. Some of us met at the Foro de Escritores regularly, and it, uh, and it was related also to some projects that uh, Federico was organizing also uh, with the uh, sound improvisations uh, around poetry. So uh, it was like a, a good place where this uh, project were, were starting or, or we were meeting to organize some, uh, some stuff. And also uh, in, in another way, the, uh, uh, the Festival PM, the Poetry and Music Festival, mm. which has been very important. And uh, Martin Gavis talked about it a couple of times, and we have talked in other occasions. Uh, also had like an um, antecedent, uh, the Foro de Escritores. But the, the good thing is that uh, it was more like more professional, more focused in, <laughs> in, in a very good sound quality, etc. The, the sessions of the Foro de Escritores were have a bit having a beer and making some noises and trying to understand something. Uh, this festival instead is a proper festival in a theater with a great sound and, <laughs> and all that. So um, that, that's what, uh, as I was saying, uh, that was part of what uh, we have been working on in, in all these years. Uh, some of us, as I said, uh, have been more in the in the academy, uh, or more related to visual poetry, to sound poetry, etc. Uh, we are all uh, uh, very much older, of course, and the, uh, our lives have changed in 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 a lot of things. But uh, I think that this idea of meeting and and sharing and 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 also sharing that uh, material that, that is in process, that, that is not finished, uh, has been very, very important. Uh, the, the opportunity to know uh, about other artists, other writers from, from abroad was always very important, uh, like share, sharing books, etc. Also, uh, it was a place to recover some of the tradition of uh, some experimental poets in Chile that weren't taking too much in, into account. For example, we made an homage to Guillermo Deisle, a, a fundamental uh, visual poet in, in Chile that no one was talking too much about him. Uh, we, we organized uh, activities uh, uh, around the, the work of Mauricio Rosemantau, another poet that lives in Germany that is very unknown in Chile. Uh, or like recovering the the works of other uh, poets or, or or the most experimental side of of some poets and, and put it in in into the view of uh, other people. So yeah, that's that's uh, kind of like we were we were trying to do so to finish and and open the conversation. Uh, I think that the, the spirit of this series, the, these meetings that we have, uh, Language is a Virus, is very much in that spirit. Probably the, the only difference is that uh, in Foro Escritores, usually all of us show some little work. Uh, here we have been focusing on one, one person each, each week, but, um, but like the, the idea of being together, people from different places, uh, to hang on for a while is 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 that same spirit. So well, that's what I wanted to tell about it. This is my side of the story. Uh, mm -hmm. This is like the bright side of the story. We can talk about the dark side, of course. But <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, uh, that's what I wanted to talk uh, a little about. Uh, oh, and before that, bef uh, before I end. I just wanted to show some some photos of the uh, of the of those meetings. Let's see. And uh, yeah, I have. Uh, this is part of uh, Martin Gavis archive. Uh, are are you seeing it? So this was the. Yes. Uh, 
this was the, the bar that uh, we met. This must be like 15 years ago, something like that. Carlos Cosinho is there. Yeah. Uh, Jordi Lloret, Laito. Yeah. David Bustos. Ah. This is Martin Gavin. Ricardo Castro. Ricardo, ahí. <laughs> Martin. Very young Gavin. <laughs> young Martin Gavin. Uh, well, he, the, there are some of the sample. This was the book we made with uh, Cecilia Vicuña, uh, Jerome Rodenberg, and also Lorenzo Ayapan, the, the bird man uh, in Chile. He imitates the, the song of the birds. Uh, here, he stayed for the kids. Just a little video, even. Yeah. Felipe, hmm? Felipe, you showed you showed the, the fifth sí. one, which is Ana Marías. No, no lo tengo acá mano. Pero la, la idea es que ahora si quieres mostrarlo. No, in the in the on the in the PDFs. Ah, eh, acá. Sí. Sorry. This is uh, Ana Marías' book. Yeah, and and we we just uh, we just published the the CD. We republished the CD with uh, Disc of PM, mm. uh, mm -hmm. the, the the CD that accompanied this uh, this book, uh, Altares Perforados, and you can check it in, on on. Eh, puedes mandar el el link después. Yeah, yeah. Oh. great. You published it like two weeks ago, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Right. Well, this, for example, was uh, Ana Maria's uh, book. I think for, for lots of us, uh, this was like the first opportunity to publish a book. Um, and, or, uh, for example, for Ana Maria, uh, or to publish like this kind of, uh, uh, well, we have the flyers and all that. Uh, here are uh, Ludicos y Sonoros. The, sí. the, this was a wonderful group, uh, a couple that they 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 made some very funny uh, performances, and it was great because it seemed like uh, it was uh, improvised, but they they practiced it very tightly. They 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 were always like exact doing the same thing at the same time. Yeah, so. And this was uh, uh, a session that uh, that I wasn't able to attend, but that was also recorded uh, in Martin's house. So, well, that's uh, a very uh, that's kind of uh, show those photos. Uh, some kind of the of the meetings we have in this uh, in this uh, bar, and last but not least, uh, we have to pay an homage to Carlos, uh, not Carlos Cosina. We also pay homages to him always, but uh, to Carlos, the owner of uh, Barra Panui. He's an amazing guy. Uh, he's kind of. Do you remember the Nazi soup in Seinfeld? Uh, that guy that when you ask uh, some some different kind of soup, always said no. Well, uh, he was a very good friend of, of ours, uh, and he always uh, allow, allowed us to participate uh, and, and make these meetings. But um, uh, he's very famous because in, in Chile, there's this uh, cocktail called uh, Piscola, which is Pisco, like a great brandy, and uh, Coca-Cola. And there are lots of proportions, sometimes it's half and a half or two of Coca-Cola and one of Pisco, etc. But this guy serves like a glass full of Pisco, but full, it's a lot. It's, it's like 40, 45 degrees. And uh, the Coca-Cola by the side. So what it would be logical uh, is that you ask another glass so you can uh, share it in and, and, and serve it more, uh, more mixed but he always say no. So usually you have like the piscola, like five times piscola and one part of, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, five parts of pisco and only one part of Coca-Cola, which is crap. This is really 
really hard to uh, to take. And it, it, it is funny because uh, he always kept all the books that were presented uh, at the, for example, when we, we usually made the, the launch of the books at this bar and we gave a, a book uh, for him. And he has all those books. There's a little library in the in the bar. I think it's the most complete uh, collection of uh, experimental poetry in Chile. I mean, uh, more than in the National Library, of course. So that's that's great, and it's great to remember him uh, also. Well, I don't know what else you want to say. Talk about contradict me. I don't know. Uh, uh, you all have your different versions, but it's great to to share a little of this with you. Uh, thank you, Felipe. Super, super wonderful presentation of those moments. And uh, I remember with uh, with Jeff and Aidan that, that, that those meetings in the in the bar, in, in those bar for Writers Forum first was the Angel, uh, I think, so something like that. Or the first time that I, I was was in the Angel, and then we changed of bar and, and that tradition of poetry in bars. I think it's really was really like. Uh, something that we take for that those meetings and in, and that's uh, for me it was really important because in Chile all the critical uh, uh, laboratory of poetry you know workshop of poetry all the poets start to write well and criticize each other in a really like a uh, savage and and, and uh, aggressive way and in in that kind of writers forum spirit we found that uh, funny moments and, and respectful and intense moment of, of share our different kind of approach with poetry. I don't know if you, maybe we, you can tell something about it, Jeff or Aidan or people who were at, at, at those moments. So. Well, I think um, the, the, the thing about, I think I might have said it in, uh, when I was talking or maybe when Martin Gubbins was, was presenting, the thing about um, Writers Forum was um, you, you would bring one thing and by the time you started to read, you were reading something else because you just, you would take chances that you, you wouldn't do in another way because the, you, you, you didn't get any feedback, but you could tell if what you were doing was grabbing people's attention and it was just encouraging. And so, yeah, that sounds, that sounds like what you're talking about. Mm. Yeah. There's nothing better. There's nothing better. What struck me about those, photos was that I mean that was a good number of people as well writers forum the ones I remember attending anyway the, the numbers were never huge were they Aiden I mean they were never never as many as you fitted in that bar and I think a lot of people and this goes back quite some way I think to the whole, that whole tradition of of holding um uh poetry readings in pubs in upstairs rooms of pubs was that it put a lot of people off you know and actually as geraldine monk often says you know it was possibly as much a class issue as anything else that put people off you know or middle class people didn't like these grotty upstairs pubs you know um yeah. and uh, uh uh so numbers were often quite small as a result of that but i was really struck in those pictures well at least in some of those pictures you were showing them that you know that the that was a lot of people. Was it always like that? I mean, was it always that popular in that sense? No, no, like, like the- I'd like to comment uh, about that. Because um, I, I think I, I attended the Writers Forum in London in 2001, 2002, where I met Jeff. And um, I brought with me to back to Chile this idea that the, that poetry had to be staged in a way. So you had to think, it wasn't just about writing, but um, putting in mise en scene, like uh, and, um, showing, uh, making up a way of showing it and, and reaching people. And um, something funny happened because uh, uh, we took it as a, as a little show, but among us, but people started to to come to just listen, and and at one point it got out of hand because um, say some really young poets, a group of uh, school children, almost came and and took over and and used it as a reading where they invited uh, relatives and 
it was very funny, but we lost control of the so some session. But um, I, I think what attracted people, and uh, as Jeff could uh, see, we were really a success. Um, the launches of books were, um, the bar was full, there were people outside, and uh, and Carlos was very happy at the beginning because he sold a lot of booze and, um, and also food. But then uh, it was too much work. Every Saturday, like having 100 people <laughs> like coming to your bar and, and uh, he would run out of uh, beer. And I think what attracted people was that uh, it was always very funny. Um, I mean, it was serious work, but um, you could laugh a lot. And uh, it was uh, incisive, political sometimes. Um, all the, the performances we did were actually very good uh, shows, um, which you couldn't say about uh, the more sort of literary uh, events of uh, linear poetry, as you call it, which were like proverbially boring. Um, so I think that that was one of our best contributions, the idea that, that a poetry reading shouldn't be something boring, but uh, rather um, surprising and uh, a variety of like a uh, revista. Mm -hmm. There was a, a sense of curiosity for many people in the in the poetry circles, which I was part of, and and in in my case, uh, I think that. Uh, what uh, Andres uh, tell us is is part of my experience as a secondary, probably goer to the, the for the escritores in the last years. Uh, besides, and many of us uh, began to attend it uh, with curiosity, with uh, a sense of uh, you gotta be aware of what is, what is happening there and many people also people that you can see in the in the photos uh, are are not like part like uh how do you say feligreses or like uh, the the usual attenders some ma many like were two times three times and and to see what what was happening in that place and and some of them were part of some kind of maybe enemy in in in, in a sense, <laughs> you know, the the dark side maybe of what Felipe. <laughs> the enemy was always in, in our shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that was, in a corner. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that was was funny. Also, some of the of the fights of those years were also uh, also involved the for the escritores and it's not the case to bring them uh, back but uh, I, I i just want to to uh, testimony that sense of curiosity of what was happening there even for those more lyric and and traditional poetry writers or or readers or for even for uh, for narrators or other kind of writers, they were trying to to get some of what is was happening there, uh, because maybe because this sense of uh, of a cool cool session that Andres uh, was talking about of entertainment of of something more interesting in many ways, also. I don't know. And yeah, and also, also I want that I that I I I, I love in in in, uh, in in photo escritores and was and, and I found in, in maybe in brighter forums in a most powerful ways like after the the meeting in the in the bars or in the places we continue to make poetry in the street. 
you know, it, I don't know if because we, we you have like London Underground after Writers Forum, something like that, then the connection between the both, it's con I, I remember we, we we wrote poetry in the street with uh, the, with the Chark, uh, with Pierce Ugil, and I, I remember Jeff, you were there, I think, and and all those kind of like the poetry continue in the in the in the in the, in the social life, you know, the, we. we well, like the William Blake grave or all, all the memories that we have of, of those moments. I remember with Andres, we start to, to, to walk all around uh, Santiago and, uh, after that, you know, that how the poetry is not just like write a book, how as Andres said, it was like something live and, 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 and complex in, in other ways. And, and, and in, that, in that form, that kind of poetry is more, is more uh, is is nearer is is nearest the, than than the semantical poetry to other arts you know like performing arts of music or theater of uh, then that is why I think a lot of young people young poet young artists of every kind of uh, visit the for the escritorio session in a way. Ana Maria, how do you remember that those uh, meetings of for the escritores? Eh, eh, memorable, memorable. Yo voy a hablar en castellano, porque mi inglés es muy básico. Tendría que hablar en matemática. Eh, sí, pues no, todo el rato es una identidad. Para mí es una, un lugar, un estar, un cuerpo, un espacio, un vacío, eh, pertenencia, ausencia. De, importante en, en, mi, en, mi, en, mi, en mi piel, súper importante. Eh, eh, para traducir un poco, eh, she says it, it's like part of her identity, it's like a place, an, an space, a void. Eh, ¿Qué más dijiste? <laughs> que justo me... Bo, cuerpo, vacío, body, eh, experiencia, yeah. vivencia, eh, pertenencia. Yeah. Estar, estar presente. Sí, claro. Y, y en tu caso, Ana María, tú además venías más desde las artes visuales, ¿no es cierto? Entonces, ¿cómo fue ese, eh, ese encuentro con, con muchos que veníamos más desde la poesía o de la música? Eh, eh, sí, Ana María sí. came more from the visual arts field, so I asked her how, how was for her like meeting all these poets and musicians. Yeah. Um, eh, fue Soledad Fariña la que me, que me empujó, fue el taller de Sole que me abrió la puerta con la poesía y, y como abrir esa ventana con la palabra, y, y finalmente es como con la palabra y el vacío. It was, uh, she, she was part of the Soledad Fariña, a, a, a great uh, poet, uh, of her workshop, and there she started... Um, uh, knowing more uh, about poetry and working with the word. Uh, also, I have to say that uh, Soledad Fariña was like one of a, how do we say, the headhunter, uh, because uh, she she invited some of us to, to be part of this group. Sí, eso fue. De ahí yo conocí a Martin Gavins. Claro. Ella me dijo, tienes que conocer a Gregorio y Martin. Claro. De ahí ya... She said, you have Viejo to el cuento. Gregorio <laughs> and Martin Gavis, and then it, it all started. Y cuando tú estuviste en, en, en Alemania, ¿conociste más cuestiones de poesía concreta ya? ¿Cómo, cómo fue eso? Eh, I asked her eh, when she was in Germany, starting those years, if she knew some, something more about concrete poetry or visual poetry. Eh, no me vinculé tanto, pero sí descubrí a, a Guillermo Deisler, que ah, vivía en esos rincones en Europa y fue claro, impresionante también. Claro, Entonces, como claro. que sí, y, y, y finalmente la vinculación con usted fue no presencial, sino a través de un sonido. Entonces, claro. como que es que todo lo que yo sí, es, genero eh, es a través de experimentación y... y Y, y probar nuevos lenguajes y atreverse también a, a, a construirlo. Mm. Entonces, nada. Mm. No, sí, eh, eh, pero no encontré eh, grupos de poesía ya, no me vinculé. No, no, no. no, no. Sí, so, seguí con eso. Cuando estaba en Alemania, no estaba vinculada a grupos de poesía, 
but uh, there she had the, the chance to, to know more about uh, Guillermo Deisler's uh, work, because this uh, visual poet I told you about... We lost you, Felipe. Oh. The last sentence we didn't listen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I was saying that uh, Ana Maria uh, didn't get in touch with the uh, uh, poetry groups in, in Germany, but there she had the chance to, to know more about the, the visual poetry of Guillermo Deisler. Guillermo Deisler uh, went out of Chile, uh, exiled in 1973. Uh, he went to Bulgaria and then to, uh, he spent uh, his uh, last years in, in Germany, yeah. in, democratic uh, Germany. So I think he, his work was around uh, the time of. Carlos, Carlos ¿tú querías decir algo? Uh, no. Ah, ah perdón. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, think, I think Jeff, you want to say something, no? Jeff Hilson. I was just going to ask what the, what the kind of gender mix was in, the, in, the, in, the, in those meetings, in those sessions that you had. Was it fairly uh, a good ratio between the, the genders or uh, because that's I think something that writers forum certainly struggled with uh, yeah. and continues to struggle with actually <laughs> even in the online sessions that are going on today you know um, it tends to be very dominated still by I mean by you know by men so yeah we, I have different we have a we yeah, have much much men than women but also we have a transsexual or two transsexual in the group uh, and yeah, yeah, a lot of what really oh, oh, homosexual, but anyway, but yes, I've seen the girls was <laughs> Luna Montenegro, Ana Maria Briede, Soledad Fariña, yeah. and uh, I forget a lot of, of... There was a girl called Tornado. Tornado. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of people who stay in the world, well, yeah, but, uh, yeah but, but I think it's, yeah, it's continued to be the same problem with that, that is why we try with Felipe also to buy really different genres and and, and also because uh, yeah, unfortunately now we have more women in the in the in the, in the shows or in the poetry action, and we are more more knowing more at the work. But yeah, yeah, I don't remember very well in Brightest Forum. But yeah, it was Jennifer Coven at the beginning and not, and some women. There was really Doreen Doreen King. Uh, who wrote that little book? Uh, she wrote a couple yes, of little so booklets yes, so called "The Poetology of Bob Cobbing." I don't know if you know those little booklets she wrote. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, that Betty Radin turned up later on. I mean, she was a much earlier kind of um, part of Writers Forum from the, you know back in the uh, back in the sixties, I think. But and and the, I mean that was my other question was related in a way because some people kind of turned up for maybe a few months and then. Uh, uh, I remember one woman turning up um, and she was okay. You know, the poetry was very linear, as you would describe it. Um, and uh, I think she was more interested, actually. Well, she was as interested in getting her work published by Bob. And she, she gave it to Bob. And then Bob said, no, I don't like this stuff at all. And she never came back, you know. So <laughs> she was there for a kind of short amount of time. And then when no publication happened, I'm not saying she just she was just there because of that, but people kept, people kind of came and went, didn't they? And I wonder, is that the same in, in Fora de Escritores? Is that the same thing? There's a core group of people. And then apart from these weird kind of enemies lingering in the corner, scowling, <laughs> yeah, <I> think, <laughs> we I never had any of those. Yeah, there, there, there were lots of people just uh, uh, going to see. the. Uh, we, we also had like people that... Uh, mostly were uh, wanted to be part of a group, uh, but it was very, yeah, I, I mean, uh, I think the, the, like the core group were like 10 or 15, but it, it's like uh, concentric circles. I mean, like, uh, uh, I mean, the, the ones that participated uh, more, uh, more regularly were like, I don't know, six, eight, and then like the uh, different kinds of uh, degrees of participation. And, and some people that, uh, as uh, Andres said, were like fans of Foro de Escritoria and, and went to the, uh, especially to, to some of the, the launching of books or things like that. And, 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 and of course, uh, uh, also a couple of eccentric guys that 
were around. I mean, th these kind of meetings attract uh, crazy people always. So <laughs> there, there were there was always one one or two crazy guys <laughs> uh, going around. Martin Gavin is there. Yeah. Uh, Bienvenido, Martin. Martin. Hola. Right hola, hola. Yeah. Straight oh, from oh. the road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Sí, en el sur. No, I'm back. Regresaste. I'm back. I came back today. Ah. Just now. Wow. Sí. Just now. Yeah. Yeah. Straight from the from the road to the session. It's good to see you, Jeff. Hi. Hello, Aiden. Good to see you, mate. Very good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. Very good to see you. Very good memories. Uh, yes. Very good times. Lots of learnings together. Uh, yeah, but people came also after we started publishing. Felipe, you remember some people started to put some pressure on why don't you publish me? Yeah. Um, so that, that thing also started to happen. A bit. And they started to see the thing as a, I don't know, publishing That's, house yeah. mm. or a production company or something like that. Um, uh, expecting to receive things um, from the, I don't know, management. Mm. And um, that started to happen. And uh, that's when I started to feel bored. Yeah. Um, because it lost that sort of uh, sense, collective, collective sort of uh, yeah, like the, feeling the, 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 of uh, doing something like together. Yeah, th there were people that didn't get the, the that didn't understand that the bo the books were uh, a result from the uh, meetings and and not yeah. the, the other way. I mean, everything that was published in the books uh, was shown in the in the meetings. It was like a yeah. register of the, of the meetings. So exactly, yeah. and that in that sense is very different from the original writers' forum. Because in the original Writers Forum, Bob Coving acted as a publisher and uh, decided. And uh, uh, we also decided, but um, whenever we're looking for things, uh, these were just the things shown, read, uh, performed uh, at sessions. Uh, obviously, we had a sort of view and uh, some... Because we didn't want and couldn't publish too many things either so we had to be selective but um, the idea was to show things that were important in the session some, somehow so yeah that line when when the line is crossed from a collective experience a creative community uh, to a sort of um, uh, understanding or misunderstanding of the thing as a as a platform or a, um, an opportunity to to get uh, recognition, uh, people started to put it in the uh, uh, biographies. People that never came or came once or yeah. things like that. So uh, it was a bit strange. Uh, but on the other hand, and that that but that was uh, not not the the general general uh, uh, experience and in, in, in general the spirit that prevailed was uh, very open and um, free and respectful um, and uh, the pub thing helped uh, the pub thing because afterwards everything became uh, uh, festive and, uh, and, and uh, open and and, uh, relaxed. Uh, just uh, as what, I uh, uh, and Andres and Martin experienced it in London. <laughs> I have to say that at one point we were having uh, little children and uh, Saturday afternoons when the best moment to meet. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, it started uh, to be emptier. But when we convened to meet on a Tuesday night, everybody would come. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Um, I think the last stretch was more this uh, secret meeting on Tuesday or the weekday. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Something that I wanted to add is. Like, okay. like some work, some uh, two, uh, two days at Ana Maria Riede or some session. Like uh, the people that are here, most, most of them. And we are like uh, recording things. The people that Felipe showed with, was a recording in Gregorio Fontaine's house. And that became after an anthology of all the scriptories of different sounds that we make at the moment. I remember I proposed an exercise with vocals, with vocals, yeah. and and we start to to play all together. You know that that, that we make here every Wednesday. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember in Brighter Forum that they, they had the collective experience of uh, performing all together. Sometime, yeah, yeah, sometime or three or four of them. I remember the, the when when we make the the review of Pierce Hugel that uh, uh, Stephen Mooney showed the other time. You know the that review of translation, and we made a reading together. You remember Martin? Yeah, in the book, yeah, in yeah. The book with Pierce. Uh, reception, reception, reception. Well, yeah. I don't remember if Jeff or Aiden was there. But, but. And, and there is a video we issued. Uh, Aiden was there. Where um, it, it's uh, us or many of us live at the Clinker in London. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, do you remember we, we issued like a DVD with us? I'd uh, love to see that. I'd I, think, see I, that. I'm, I might have to look. Friend. I might have that. I'm not sure. I feel got can we can we share the can we share the screen? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Hello Luna and Adrian. Uh, hola, 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 hola everybody. Hola. This is great. We love to see you all. We are here locked and cold. Yo, locked and cold. Hello all the who's got all the dogs? Is it Martin you got all the dogs barking? I have. Uh, no, my dog is sleeping. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a loud dog, but that's not mine. <laughs> that's it. I, I think it's Martin Vaquero's soul. <laughs> Maybe Jed O is the dog. Look at Young and Banter. <laughs> I don't see it. I know you don't see it. Wait, wait, wait. We're going to share it in a second. <laughs> oh. Are those Ana Maria Brides legs? Ahí está, mira. Oh. Como un trompo. Oh, Edria. Oh, that's the suffix. I remember it. it. Is that Valparaiso? No. No, that's the clinker. Yeah, that's ah, the Sussex. Yeah, yeah, the Sussex. In, uh, what road was that in, Tim? The Beauvoir, it was the Beauvoir area of, of Hackney. Yeah. Englefield, Englefield Road. Englefield, yeah. Wow. Zoe, yeah. that was the place. I've got loads of recordings still from there. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, the piano, I remember the piano. <laughs> Not in tune. No, of course. Never in tune. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Maguero playing the drums. The drums, <laughs> that was that was mythic. <laughs> and playing them very well, actually. <laughs> but so the drummer was pissed because uh, it was not <laughs> tuned. <laughs> yeah, that oh. was... And wow. that's reception, reception launch. That's Sean, a bookshop. A Sean's head. Yes. Huh? Duo with Martin. Oh, John Bonnie. Oh my yeah. God. Sean Bonnie, yeah. And, uh, and Martin guys with, with hair. This is on Martin's uh, right. Just is that at the book art bookshop? Yes, that was the right. place. Oh, the city. Oh, yeah. City of London. Yeah, Oak Street. Luna está igual. Is it, that, does it, uh, is it uh, still there, the, the bookshop? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, good. good. Amazing, considering what that area is like now. That's Piers, yeah. That's Piers. Yeah. 
Gregorio. Gregorio. Gregorio sí. ¿Está Gregorio? ¿Está Gregorio acá? Yes. No. Yes. Yeah, that's Gregorio at the piano. Fixing the ceiling. Ah, pero está en el grupo ahora. Sí, sí, no. No. Pero se le, se le inundó el taller. Ah, sí, sí, sí. sí. Flooding on his head. Luna, no compartiste el audio. That is Burbeck. That is Burbeck College, I think. Oye, pero escuchan el audio, ¿no? No, no. No, no. No, no. no Dios. No. Es una película muda. Pero está bien, sin audio. We never published those. No, pero publicos. el audio está muy bueno. Well, they can see. <laughs> Tienes que, que, sal, que salir y compartir de nuevo con audio. Sí, eso hay que hacer. Eh, a ver, sale y ponle ver con audio, please. <ríe> Un poco. <ríe> Martín, Martín Vaquero. Léelo, Martín. Lee, Martín. <ríe> Lee ahora. <ríe> Oye, pero escuchan el audio, ¿no? No. no. Estoy haciendo doble, estoy doblando. Tienes que salir claro, Martín, de la yo te, lo, yo te lo digo. Vamos a tratar de salir y volver. Amazing compilation en Luna Adrian Sink. Tenemos la tremenda compilation, chiquillos. Tenemos que hacer una noche, so, un festival. YouTube. Let's YouTube that. ¿Escuchan el audio ahora? Ahora sí. I'm not going to be a good person. 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 I
In the school they used to keep you well, in the school they used to help keep people, in the school they used to yield people, in the school they used to lieutenant, in the school they used to a lieutenant, in the school they used to netum tali, in the school they used to kill so many, in the school they used to ill man cosy, in the school they used to molly iskon, in the school they used to cool manis, in the school they used to moany school, in the school they used to lay lonsky, in the school they used to, in the school they used to in the school they used to oh without wanting I wanted in the school they used to in the land of the sinking they used to in the hand of the river I wanted in the skin of the drum without wanting I wanted Ooh. we were eating mushrooms all that week Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. That reading the all the names of the people who I don't know the names around the monument to the fire of London. Yeah, that that. Fire of yeah. London. yeah. and yeah, by yeah. the way, we all pee on it. We did a <laughs> pissing on the side. The pissing was on the Bank of England, not the Sorry, monument. No, no, that's yes, the you are was right. On the Bank Hagen. of England, not uh, the Bank of England. And thereafter, we tried to get into the cemetery to we have to look for um, William Blake's tomb, uh, and then the police forces came. You remember that? Yeah, uh, but yeah. you know, we we have that on here, but also we have some off cuts, but we don't have them right here. We have to go somewhere else to find them, but we have some good documentation of it. Wow! wow. We wow. we should upload everything. That's amazing. I'd forgotten all of that. Uh, just amazing. Yeah, I think that the mod, the thing at the monument might have been after the bl Blake because we nearly. Yeah. Because that was soon. I think, I think we just totally carried on right. walking, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and that's when we obviously again, to, to my the team. Same police came, the, the same policeman came came again. When oh, we did were he? At the <laughs> <laughs> they said you have three minutes, or we will call the forces. I remember that very well. <laughs> the, we will call the forces. <laughs> I had to did stop that mean? No good. Yeah, who knows? 
Sure. Well, I had to stop Sean. He wanted to fight with the cop, didn't he? At, at yes. Sa- yeah. Next cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. And he I'm was sure terrible, he but he was brilliant as well. You remember? <laughs> he said. Uh, he said the problem is that you are a cop and I am a poet. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, I remember we cry with the same poet with the same conference poets. We are we are to visit Blake Grief. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Actually that was Aiden's idea because we were nearby in the pub really drunk and he said let's go to the to the William Blake. In the bookshop. Fun Hill thing. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, Luna they contribute a lot to that kind of projection of the poetry outside of the, the place, so uh, we have to do it so many times that they allow to get do it. around and, and create so many times. Yeah, I remember getting on an underground train with Sean and a number of other people and performing the, one of the carriages just... I mean, it was a Saturday night and people were just coming out of the pubs and we just got on the train and started reading the train, you know. Yeah. That's brilliant. Incredible. Incredible. And that nobody knew what the hell was going on. I mean, we didn't really either, but uh, it was... Uh, <laughs> that is probably like filmed somewhere. In, in, in London Underground must have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Evident. Yeah. The weirdest thing... <laughs> I was trying to see if I could see Bob in any of that footage from the clinker, because he was, he was usually there. And when yeah, but, but that camping, was in 2005. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. Too late. Yeah. yeah. He'd, have been, he'd have been dead by then, yeah. There was afterwards, yeah. Because yeah. he was always there. He was almost every, every gig. And I remember the days when it used to be really, really popular, and all the seats used to get uh, taken up. And Bob and Jennifer would turn up late and they'd bring deck chairs. They'd set up their own deck chairs. There's some great photographs of that in these deck chairs with the clinker. Wonderful. Jennifer the used chair. to like the clinker because uh, they had pool tables. Yeah. Jennifer was an amazing pool player. Yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. But I went, I went to see... Um, Hugh, Hugh uh, Metcalf is living up in um, Suffolk, where his mum used to live at the moment. And I actually went to see him on what would have been Bob's 100th birthday. So mm. I went up there and uh, we had a good day out filming. Very nice. Uh, how is he? Bob. Sorry? How is he? He's all right. He's doing okay. I mean, he's I not it. really running the clinker at the moment. He's doing a few things up in Suffolk, but um, nothing in London at the moment. But no, okay. he's doing really well. Good. Yeah. Could could I ask something about um, reception, reception, reception? Um, because um, and I noticed that was meant to be issue one. Was that yeah. and 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 yeah? So that that was um, peers, wasn't it? And I, yeah. I don't know if anybody still in in touch with with him since or. <laughs> Yeah, Aiden, do you know I, about him? Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm in touch with Piers. Um, he'd kind of disappeared off the scene for family reasons and stuff for mm. uh, a good few years and had stopped writing and everything. Mm. But um, recently he's been talking about writing again. So um, mm. I've just been kind of keeping in touch and, and, and letting him kind of, uh, kind of find his own way in. Um, he's part of Veer Books and, and although he hasn't been doing anything uh, with Veer, We've always kept him on all, you know, every email that goes out still has his email address on it. So, so he's still connected that way. But I am hoping that he's going to come back. He's actually working in forestry and stuff like that now. And yeah. He's looking about, yeah, it's always something really interesting, everything he's doing. So, but the, Stephen Mooney was talking about a section reception and as if he had some material for it yeah. um, that was collected at the time. And I, 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 I haven't been talking to him since I'm yeah. due to talk to him this week. Um, so I must find out if he has that on some file somewhere. Yeah. Um, but I can't remember what we collected. But at that point, uh, between all the Chilean poets being over and 
and the LUC stuff and then writer's form. I mean, we were just throwing stuff together all the time. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, some of it, uh, it was the same with Jeff and Sean. Some of it would come out and some of it wouldn't. And that was mm -hmm. just the way of it. You know, you, you, you know, if it had came out, it was almost just luck. But yeah, I will be back in touch with Piers and try and find out mm -hmm. if he has any material. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really interesting structure and um yeah and and especially yeah to to yeah to think of that kind of exchange ar around languages <laughs> and mm. uh, if not exactly through them yeah really interesting yeah uh, Pierce did do a, a few different things to do with translation he tried one with italian poets yeah. and he tried one with um i think iranian or afghanistan yeah and sort of worked to different degrees but never in the same i think he never managed to find like with the chileans the, yeah. the sort of spirit of 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 the thing that came out in that was incredible you know yeah. the, the energy was just off the walls you know so so that that's something i don't think he ever found a group again yeah. that, that we could um uh collaborate with in that way yeah. yeah, that really comes out of the film. Really enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. Give it aid and let us know what happened with him. It'll be great to hear what's happening with him. Yeah. No. I'm. 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 I haven't said to. Him, I've mentioned this group, but I haven't said to him about coming along. I don't. I kind of like want to take it bit by bit. And as I say, only recently was the first time he'd been talking about actually writing again. I don't know in what form. I mean, he's done academic stuff and he's, 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 uh, I think he's trying to propose another PhD, maybe to Cambridge or in to do with forestry or something, you know, like, so, but, but writing, I mean, PhD in the sense in of the, forestry. I know it's mad, but, um, it, Forest uh, of PhDs. Well, I think it's something to do with even better. PhD. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one, of his first yeah. books was, one of his first beer books was about forestry, wasn't it? Or the title was something to do with forestry, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I, it right. I think it's Pierce. Yeah, no, I don't think he was in, so much into it back then. But, but yeah, but uh, as I say, I, I'll try and get him to 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 um to maybe even link up on here which would be great you know that I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully in the new year we'll get that organized that would be good uh, he has lots of recordings of stuff um so we just need to try and find out uh, i think martin he uh, he has uh, most of the luc stuff um I and i think he may have some of it on digital now but um uh, that's something we just have to dig up you know yeah, he did have a, a handicap, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, never none of yeah. us had anything. He had a, he had yeah. a, he actually had a quite a good camera and a proper mic. But yeah. uh, I think if you remember rightly, in those days, you couldn't simply record it and then have it on a computer. There was a whole thing that you had to go through. Um, I remember doing a recordings, and then it took hours to get it transferred into a different format that that could actually be on the computer so some of the luc stuff was quite long so i think um i think he may have got it on something we can look at now i'll i'll, I'll try and find that out and then get him to come along in the, in the new year very good that I've would be got, very I've good still, i've still got quite a lot of dat recordings from the clinker with martin and and sean i, I just came across that one because this time last year i went through all my recordings i had of sean of course and um and there was definitely stuff with you, Martin, and I think maybe even something Oops. in the Royal College of Art. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, you're that. right. Yeah, I've got that somewhere as well. Wow, great. Um, yeah. We should upload everything. Yeah, it is, as Aidan said, it's always the problem with transferring because my stuff, yeah. I mean, that takes now, a, <laughs> it's mm. a really odd, odd medium, and I'm, I've got hundreds of them underneath this bed. Ah, you know, okay. um, so uh yeah it's always that hassle but yeah it's gradually hopefully if we get some stuff done and i've got those ones certainly that one from the clinker and i think the royal college of art one taken oh, out good. They're, they're with all this other stuff that has shown on so um they're easy to get to 
It would be great so we don't lost we don't yeah. lose that uh, all that material, right? Mm. There weren't many. F I remember. I mean, it's on a related note, but not to do with this kind of group. But there was a, a, a young Greek woman. I think she was, came to one of the writers' forum workshops when Bob was still alive. Must have been two thousand and one, maybe, when some of the visiting Canadian sound poets were over. I know Paul Dutton was over, um, and she filmed one of the writers' forums' workshops in its entirety. I think I don't know how many of those kinds of events ah. were ever filmed, but uh, those sessions were ever filmed. But I can't find my my video cassette now. It's a video cassette of that. I don't know where it's gone, but. Um, well, but I, if I ever find it again, I will upload it. Sure, if I can get it transferred and uploaded, because I mean, these kinds of resources are incredibly important, aren't they? Yeah. Well, funny, yeah. funny enough, one of the, I think I only ever went to the workshop once, because then I realised it was for pe work, people working rather than just a recordist like me. But I did record one with um, with Paul Dutton, because I really wanted to see him at the uh, at the Victoria. So I've definitely got the recording of that. Um, but that would just be audio. You're on mute, yeah. This is at the Betsy Trotwood with, I mean, Adrian Clark read that day, I read that day, uh, Robert Shepard I was, was down reading. Um, who was else the, was there? The, sorry? Who else was there? I was there. I remember the... Oh, the Andres, film. okay, yeah. And Chris Paul, uh, because uh, actually Paul Dutton lifted uh, for his performance something from... Uh, Chris Paul, huh. okay, wow, wow. Uh, and did, did, were you? Did you read Andres that day? Um, well, probably, yeah. Uh, okay, huh. I must have presented something. Um, mm. But I remember that um, Chris was uh, searching through his uh, agenda to in order to find something to read and he was doing all these grunts like mm, yeah. <laughs> and, and Paul said oh that's great so so he included the and, and I saw him after that and, and he included it in, in, in his sort of regular performance he would start from this uh, rummaging through papers and, and like mm, oh no no <laughs> I remember seeing seeing Paul Dutton, it might have been that time over, do a duo with Bob at the Clinker. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of their pieces just started off with Bob trying to give whiskey to Paul and saying, oh, come on, have a drink. You know, and, and it just all developed from there into this whole improvisation about whiskey. It was, it was fantastic. Got a really lovely recording of that somewhere. Ah, good. Yeah. I mean, it's funny this year, because it was Bob's centenary, I was really wanting to get a, a CD out of Bob. And I know somebody was wanting to do it, but the whole COVID thing just, you know, fucked everything up. So hopefully, hopefully at some point, but I've got some lovely recordings of Bob with Phil Minton as well. Oh, duos, the vo just vocal duos, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I have somewhere in Chile, though, um, this uh, vinyl, of the green computer, mm. Bob Coving and Hugh Metcalf. And um, I remember the Habana vinyls uh, yeah. being always somewhere there. But I never got one uh, apart from this little one. It's like That's a single. Aberration, yeah. Yeah, someone should reissue those records. I think Green Computer particularly is brilliant. Really, really great record. Sod and Sauce, that one about the yeah, types of beer. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant. What is the next step of photo uh, escritores, Martin Gavin? Yes. Um uh the next step uh, is the last the last step <laughs> <laughs> end of the, the world the next step is, last... um, documenta <laughs> documenta for escritores i don't know i think for escritores has continued 
uh, in a way uh, with all of us doing things together in a different manner, not gathering together once uh, every month, uh, uh, but doing things and we've continued, I think, with the spirit. Um, um, I mean, as, as long as it is possible with the distance and everything and lives get complicated, but um, I don't think uh, there, is, there is a next step really because uh, we are doing steps. Uh, Festival PM, uh, Poetry and Music Festival here in Santiago, I see it as a sort of continuation of you know, that project also, uh, different uh, stage, but uh, same, uh, same attitude. Uh, towards uh, openness and um, connections between arts. Um, so yes, uh, I think the energy continues, um, but uh, for some reason it couldn't continue in the way it started. Um, it was, I think, 10 years more or less without inactive uh, 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 gatherings and meetings and performances uh, uh, advertised as for all scriptores things but um, I, I don't think it is dead uh, as punk is not dead for all scriptores <laughs> uh, it's not dead uh, writers forum I'm not sure about that uh, I, I, I lost track of what happened there uh, but uh, at, at least here, uh, I mean, not here, but here in this room, this room, these uh, sessions, yeah. uh, it is a bit, I write this forum thing also, uh, this language thing, uh, the same spirit, uh, many of the same people. Uh, so, yeah, the next step is probably keeping on uh, with the the attitude uh, we've all we all learned in those years from the, those guys from bob from from each other um, i think that is all about creation and uh, poetry isn't it uh, so yes that is the next step writers forum is still going on it's it's been meeting every month online for the last through, through this year oh, wow. um, so it has an online presence I mean obviously you know after Lawrence died I think that that part you know because of the split mm. that part of Writers Forum has has obviously stopped but I think there's some attempt I don't know maybe to kind of bring to create some kind of rapport between those two um, those two groups uh, I don't know when that will happen or where it will happen or I don't think it'll happen in a in a kind of online capacity, but it might happen once things get back to you know face to face. I, I, I but I don't know. I don't know. There's some talk of a of another anthology, putting together an anthology of work for people who've been kind of attending more recently. But I I I I, I don't know to be honest. Well, um, writers forum with Lawrence used to meet in Goldsmiths like yeah. about once a month. We used to go. And like the people, it wasn't uh, such a big gathering, but I think all the people who went are doing things like Gregorio, also Iris Colom, um, and then Uran, who's mo moved maybe more into sound vocal stuff, really. Javier, Javier as well, Mark who's Robinson. in Slan, yeah. Um, and then the other writers forum, which was um, Anthony and... Yeah, we went to that one as well. We've been going to all the writers' forums <laughs> ever after, but uh, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, but it's been really fun as well. Yeah, Johan Johan De Witt still. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't have an online presence at all. So he's he's <laughs> yeah, been he's no. been absent for a year. But, um, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah but we had some exciting moments with uh, Johan as well. That one day that he was totally against contemporary poetry and it was a massive fight, but somehow it was the best day in the pub. Everybody stayed and we 
talked about poetry forever. It was quite interesting, actually, having a stance against something. I don't know. It was interesting. We should invite Anthony to talk about it because Anthony is really the one that's been driving it for like, did for a long time. Mm. I haven't seen him recently. No, no, yeah. Now it's Peter. I haven't seen anyone recently. I think now it's Peter, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think it's Peter, yeah. Martin, I just found a tape here from um, 2nd of September 2003 with you, Sean, Chris Paul, and Mark Jackson. Wow. That was it. 41 minutes. Cool. Of, uh, you guys, yep. <laughs> Listen, that thing. Yeah. So, a trip, a trip in space. time and space. And funnily enough, the, the other bit on the recording that I made, wow. Ian Smith, the trumpeter, Simon Fell, the bass player, and Harris Eisenstadt, the drummer, came out as a CD. Wow. So that night, then, wow. On CD. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, then that's, that's incredible to know. Huh? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll I would love to see that. that. But I've got quite a few recordings. Good. We should get a fund and get all together to transfer the material mm. and perform it again. It's getting fun, that's the problem. In front of the screen or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's meet all together after COVID, like uh, one month. Yeah. In a place in the world, and we make uh, all that, you know. Like in Patagonia, in ev yes. every, all of us to Patagonia. <laughs> yeah. By the way, were any of you guys at um, Bath a few years ago uh, when there was the concrete poetry exhibition at uh, uh, Luna and um, oh God, what was it called? There were some guys from South America. Definitely down, who used to be at Writers Forum. Where, at Birkbeck? Sorry? At Birkbeck? No, no, this was at Bath. But I'm trying to remember, the actual place was in the countryside, in a very... Yeah. In Bath, you mean that when we went to Bath to yeah. the seminar? Yeah, yeah, that's right. But I don't know who it was, I mean, it was Andres. I was uh, in Corsham. Yeah, Corsham. That's what I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Uh, Corsham, yeah. yeah. Was that you, and Andres? Um, I didn't um, present. I was uh, no. in the audience. Uh, yeah. But did you meet up with Matthew Robertson and we had a bit of a party the night before? Yeah, yeah. Remember? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, and uh, with Silvio Paredes, with the uh, bass player. Oh, yeah, uh, Silvio, that's okay. right. <laughs> yeah, we went to his house and um, yeah, and um, really lovely, huge house. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was a really nice night. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That I was, was thinking uh, that maybe t uh, today we, we should make an improvisation only with our voices, not with instruments. Uh, other times. I, if I remember in in Coros we usually made it just uh, with. Uh, I mean, later we started using delays and effects and computers and all that. But uh, we should try it uh, unplugged. Mm -hmm. Effectless. Effectless. Yeah. Effectless. <laughs> Delayless. 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 Delaylessness. Delaylessness, effectlessness. <laughs> Dislaylessness. <laughs> Without <laughs> <word. laughs> This delay ah. you. This delay me. This delay me. La, la, <laughs> la delay me. <laughs> Lady. 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 Lady.
Lady, 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 lady,
Dry Eclipse Eclipse situation. Sexy clips. <laughs> Eclipse. 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 Distortion. Distortion. Delay. Delay eclipse. Distortion. Eclipse. Lady the eclipse. Click Oh, <laughs> Cluster. Decoration. Epsilon. <sighs> Dry wet. Deconation. Dry. Wet. Dry. Wet. wet. <sighs> High low. High low. Dry. The low. Halo, 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 Lady delay. Yeah. Lady lay. Lady lay. 
di delay 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 God is dog. God is dog. Dog is God. Dog is style. God. God is style. God is doggy style. God is style. God is doggy. Dog is God. Hey, Godi. Godi, doggy, God, it's doggy, God. Diggy, doggy, Godi, even. Diggy, Godi. Dang it, Godi, Godi, Godi. Hi, Daggy. Oh, she's doggy, 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 Doggy Ducky 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 Dog is dust. Dog is dust. God is dust. God is dust. Dust is in dust. Dust in, in dog with dust. Dust, dust, dust. Is dust. dust is God. Dust is dust. Dust. Dusty. In dog with dust. Dusty dog. Dusty dog. And dog with dust. Dog with dust. Dog with dust. Dog with us. Now it's with us. Now with us. Dust. Now with us. Now with us. Now it us. A dog. Oh oh, machines. 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 Dry, wet. Dry, wet. Dry, wet. Dry, wet. Wet machines. Web, 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 web. Wet machines. Web, 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 web. Dry, wet, dry, wet, dry. Cobweb. Distortion. 
Bob Webb. Ah. Bob Webb. Ah. Bob Webb. Bob Webb. Bob Webb. Bob Webb. Pop. Bob Webb. Bob Webb. Pop is dead. Bob Webb. politicians Beatboxing. Ah, that's good. Say good. Say good. Say good. Be good. Behave. 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 Jen. Oh. Bim, bam, boom. Bim, bam, boom. Boom. Boom, bam, bim. Boom, bang, 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 Bakeros Bongo. Oh, yeah. Jolly Fanto. War is coming. Jolly. Jolly Fanto. War is coming. Coming, going, coming, going. War is coming. Dog. Worries, dog. Worries, dog. Worries. No worries. Stop worries. No worries. No worries. Stop worries. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Wars. Cochamo, Coco, Cochamo, Coco, 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 Chamo, Coco, Coco, Chamo, Mo, Coco, Chamo, 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 Cochamo, Cochanel, Cochamamil, Cochaco, Cochaco, Cochamo, Cochamama, Cochamo, 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 Calendario, 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 Calorub, 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 cazuela mortis, caloruber, caloruberse, youtubers, youtubers, <laughs> los youtubers, los youtubers. Más tenga de sacis youtubers. Youtubers. Youtuber culo. Youtuber. Youtuber gama. Youtube vegan. 
YouTube basta, YouTube basta. YouTube basta. YouTube 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 No seas tan YouTubular. 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 Oh, ahorrar batería. Save battery. Save battery. Close. Save battery. Radio signals. Cochamo radio. Radio Metanoia. Transmit. Metanoia. Directly radio. from volcanoes. Airways. <laughs> God is barking. El forro de escritores. Por el forro de escritores. Por el forro de escritores. Violence. Violence. Things. Violin. Violent things. Ah, music. Music. Utensils, you tingling. You, you, 
you tag you tag you you, you that. tag along you that you that you, you that tag along drag along you drag along youtube ta ta your tongue guys i have to i have to leave have to yeah. leave see you next yeah, week everybody had to leave i, I was so excited leave. with all these noises by the way the, uh, we, we have a an a special issue next week also a christmas special of languages of virus so you you all have to bring your christmas poems we will have an open mic uh, christmas open mic language <laughs> so everyone can read um, christmas special yeah Great. christmas session so pre prepare Best wishes session we wish you a merry christmas bring your Seasons rain dear. sessions yeah we're, we're gonna sing Seasons South sessions. <laughs> bring your inner christmas tree <laughs>